if cryptocurrency completely tanks, who gives a f But if like fiat currency completely tanks, then we already have complete global collapse. So like it, it's done. We will watch scams, zealots, and jet skis inside the crypto uh, scene first, and then we will watch the CoffeeZilla one. Whoever said that didn't have enough money. This is garbage. This is the most Bitcoin thing you could do at a Bitcoin conference. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's the, this is the instrument of financial terrorism. Oh my God, dude. I love, I love maximalists so much. They like the... Like when you're so on... When you're so pro Bitcoin that you like... What, deny fiat currency? You think, like, fiat currency should be abolished? That's awesome. So it's just, your, your crypto is going to be worth nothing, okay? We're at the New York Stock Exchange. And this is for everyone who has been taken advantage by the big guy. That's awesome. Please rise. That seems very stressful, because we're not just talking about a couple dollars. We're talking about millions of dollars, potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a little cult in there. They started turning on me like, yo, you, you're a scammer, blah, blah, blah. Are you a scammer? Apparently, China is seeking 5K deaths from COVID a day, but the World Health Organization is hopeful they can declare COVID over by next year. Can you provide more info on this? Because the media is either not reporting or the stuff coming out is too vague. Yeah, American and Western media literally was like, China sucks, China sucks, China sucks. Their fucking COVID lockdowns were crazy. Their COVID lockdowns were crazy. And their COVID lockdowns were kind of crazy for the most part. And now... They acted like they didn't do that coverage for the past fucking four months, non-goddamn stop. And now they are turning around and going, China allowed uh, their COVID restrictions to be diminished to nothing. And now they're dying. Oh, it's crazy. Okay. These motherfuckers are the biggest fake friends. It's crazy. And one thing that people don't understand is when China is fucked with COVID, the rest of the fucking planet is fucked. Okay. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. As clickbait headlines warp our view of the world, I'm spiraling down the rabbit hole looking for the truth. On this episode, crypto. It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. If you watched the Super Bowl this year, it was Bomb hard to miss Thank the, you for the five crypto the related subs. ads featuring big celebrities and a QR code. While the price of digital currencies has skyrocketed over the years, so has the hype. But something caught my eye when watching an episode of Vice's Dark Side of the 90s that retold the cautionary tale of the dot-com bubble. There's no bigger stage in the world of traditional marketing than the Super Bowl. Every dot-com was buying up the media space to be on the Super Bowl. The comparisons between the Super Bowl ads of the dot-com bubble and the crypto craze were striking. For those living under a rock for the past few years, Cryptocurrencies are digital money that can be sent between users' online wallets. Each transaction is recorded on a ledger known as a blockchain, which is then stored in larger chunks of data that are verified by other computers on the network. Cryptocurrencies are not backed by any other asset and technically have no intrinsic value. Its worth is based on what people are willing to pay for it, but proponents say there is a lot of value in moving away from a centralized money system backed by paper currencies, known as fiat money, which also don't have any intrinsic value, but is Dude, I love that, man. I just, I love the concept. They were just like, this capitalism shit, like, it's it's hard to scam, okay? You can get in trouble sometimes. And like, let's just imagine something new. Let's just imagine something new that has like no fundamentals whatsoever. There's nothing tangible associated with it. It's just a thing that we imagined up, okay? And, uh, you know... Its value is whatever people are willing to pay for it, because why the fuck not? It's easier to scam people with fiat. You are fucking out of your mind, dude. At least there is some level of, like, regulations around fiat currency. What the fuck do you mean? Cryptocurrency is quite literally built around the concept of just fucking people over. That's why every goddamn week, CoffeeZilla comes out with a new video. Like, people go to jail. Okay, people at least like kind of go to fucking jail every now and then. Not all the time, especially if they don't like fuck rich people over. Okay. It's literally harder to follow fiat at this stage. If you are still saying that cryptocurrency is supposed to be technically easy, uh, easier to follow or whatever the fuck and no one gets scammed on it or rather people get scammed uh, per capita 
uh, uh, more on fiat currency, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Crypto bros, dude, I don't understand it. Please, 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 please. I, I don't get it. I don't get, I don't get what you did. Is it fetal alcohol syndrome? Is it fucking hitting your head a lot? Like what led you into being this firm fucking loyalist for something that ass fucks you on the daily? Okay. And, and non-consensually, I mean, of course. Like, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. What happened, bro? Like, this thing is, like, literally created to fucking milk you for whatever marginal value that you have in fiat currency, of course. Okay? And you're just still riding for it. It doesn't make sense. If you think you're going to be the get-rich-quick guy uh, on one of these scams, let me tell you, you won't be. You won't be. You will not be, Okay? It's not going to happen for you. Backed by the faith in its issuer, mostly governments. But there's no shortage of critics who have raised the alarm about the potential nefarious uses of cryptocurrencies. Bro, I love how this video too says fiat isn't backed by anything. It's true. Fiat isn't backed by anything. Except for fucking nukes. And also governments. And he did admit that. To better understand this newfangled money, I bought a ticket to the 2022 Bitcoin conference in Miami. A fever dream for anyone into crypto. This year, over 25,000 of the most faithful Bitcoiners came to celebrate the digital asset. While there are thousands of digital currencies, Bitcoin is considered the oldest and arguably the most well-known. You ready, guys? We're going to the moon. What are you doing down here? Are you networking? Do you have 100% faith in the U.S. government that fiat will always be solvent? Um... I don't have 100% faith in the U.S. government. I just have faith in governments. Because the reality is that, like, if cryptocurrency fucking completely tanks, who gives a fuck? But if, like, fiat currency completely tanks, then we already have complete global collapse. Do you understand? So, like, it, it's done. You know, pick up fucking bottle caps at that point because that's what we're trading on. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's done. It's over. And that chatter wasn't like being a fucking idiot or anything. I think that chatter was being asking a serious question. That was a delayed autistic guppy. He, he's he's a, a smarter chatter than the average uh, chatter. Dude, I know so much about my chatters. That's crazy. Like, I know that motherfucker. I mean, he's an idiot too. But I know that motherfucker lives in Vegas and literally did do uh, and and went around and I think door knocked. Right? Didn't was that wasn't that you? That's crazy. Yeah, he 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 canvassed for Bernie in Vegas, dude. Fuck, man. What if I, what formative memories have I forgotten? I could have probably learned a fucking language instead of knowing random details about all you dumb fucks in the chat. Why do I know this? Why? Why should I know that? I should not know that. I literally should not know that. Anyway, let's continue. How mean are you? I'm just, I mean, I'm just a huge fan. So I'm going down and seeing all the people that like Bitcoin. The event themselves is cool because it brings us together. And then we kind of branch out and network among ourselves. And we're all so early still. People think they missed the boat on the opportunities, but that's not true. So what, what, are, you, what are you doing here, uh, Nick Nasty? The money was good. The weather was right. And the women are nice. What are you such a fan of? Ha! At the Bitcoin cryptocurrency conference, literally just no bitches, okay? Straight up. I was there. I was in Miami. I think I was there for like the what? The Logan Paul fight or some shit, okay? And and literally, when the cryptocurrency uh, uh, thing was happening, at the same time, straight up the most sausage fest ass fucking parties you've ever seen, bro. I swear to God. They would do like, they would throw like after parties and one of them we went to on accident, okay? And the only women that were there we're straight up just paid to be there. That was it. That's it. No, no woman has gone to a Bitcoin cryptocurrency conference unless they're getting paid to be there. Whole crypto revolution, you know, like anti-government, being your own bank. It's, it's all cool. It is an interesting crowd, but it's a fun crowd. I've not met anybody who's not a good time. To it, I'm telling you, you eat ass, Point. she'll never forget you. Point proven. <laughs> After a while, she's going to love it. She'll tell her friends. Well, the crowd definitely had some folks who were a fun time, if you're As into eating ass. But I was here on a mission. I wanted to know why Bitcoin, of all the cryptocurrencies out there, was the best and had the most devoted fan base. So I hit up Max Kaiser and his wife Stacy Herbert, who are minor celebrities in the Bitcoin world. 
Orange pill, orange pill. This show is all about sats, margs, and orange pill. Thank you, much. All right, cool, guys. Do you get stopped pretty frequently in events like this? Well, you're about to find out. What's up? What's oh. up? What's going on? How's it all going? Oh, I think okay, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. Bro, he gets stopped so much, he's like bored of it. That's kind of fucking awesome. He's literally like, ah, oh, God, yeah, I fucking hate it. It's like me at TwitchCon, bro. That's crazy. Hey. Thank you. My pleasure. Max calls himself a Bitcoin maximalist. To even use the word crypto around him is a faux pas. Why am I in this show? Because you're the, you're the crypto expert. No, I'm I, crypto. That's you're a the curse word. Expert. Don't ever say that again today. I'll, 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 I'll just be un, unmanageable. All right, I, am I want this guy to take the autism test, okay? That's what I want. I want to know what he's scoring on that. Be a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I bet storm I, off without quit this whole project. Is Bitcoin not a cryptocurrency, or do you not even do you not even consider them in the same uh, in the same uh, vein? They're not the same. Uh, only Bitcoin is truly decentralized, so you can't really make the comparison. He said, "I want to become unmanageable." I wanted to ask Max why he didn't consider Bitcoin a cryptocurrency. But we were constantly sidetracked by everyone who wanted to take a photo with him. All right. For life. All right, one, two, three. All right, let's go. Awesome, awesome, right. awesome. Let's do it. Nice. 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 Uh, okay, cool. We got it. You, you got to get me somewhere. Okay. okay. I'm going to be stuck okay. here. Do you, where uh, you let's, want let's, me? Let's go, let's go backstage real All quick. All right, let's go. Finally, we found a semi-quiet place to talk. You know, everybody here seems to be a Bitcoin maximalist, but you're the Bitcoin maximalist. So what does that mean? Michael Saylor calls me the high priest of Bitcoin, the, the high priest of maximalism. The, the path narrows, as I like to say. So the deeper... I mean, I just like, I love that. This guy's such a fucking weirdo, dude. Like, that's your guy? I, I, I'm sorry. It's just, I know it's like optics or whatever, and it's like not that significant, but it's crazy to me that like, you hold up this dude as, like, the guy. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, bro. Well, it's kind of hard to listen to, I feel like. The more you go into the rabbit hole, the more maximalist you become. If you study Bitcoin, you realize that it's the last trade. Everything is ultimately going to go into Bitcoin. It's not a technology. It's not software. It's not all that shit. What it is, is perfect money. The only other two monies that were even remotely similar in history is gold and U.S. Treasuries. The fiat money system is collapsing. I think that's pretty clear. Gold is not as good as Bitcoin for many, many reasons. It does exactly what it's supposed to do, and it solves a fundamental... Yeah, libertarians that used to be like gold standard truthers, you know what I mean? Like the OG fucking Ron Paul Andes have now fully shifted over to... Let's just take this to the absolute opposite end of that spectrum because every single one of these guys... Now, I'm old. I'm 31 years old. I remember... Back in the day, all the Ron Paul uh, libertarians that didn't talk about, you know, the, the arbitrary nature of age of consent laws or whatever would constantly talk about the gold standard, okay? Constantly, 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 okay? So then they decided, like, okay, this shit is, like, old school. It's not working. Nobody wants that anymore. And then Bitcoin came around, and they were like, okay, fuck it. We're just, we're just going to go on the exact opposite end of that spectrum and decide, like, Fuck the gold standard. Fuck fiat currency. We're just, we just want completely like just money tied to nothing. Like no anchor, no fucking thing that instills confidence in it other than just pure confidence. That's awesome. Fundamental question for humans. Uh, uh, what is perfect money? And, and with that, we're restarting really humanity. And, and that's, that's a great time to be alive. Uh, but, there, you know, you watch this here in the Super Bowl. There were how many different, uh, I don't know. I love the idea that crypto bros think the U.S. built up the entire global economy around the USD after World War II just to let it be destroyed by apes and slurp juices. If crypto posed an actual threat to fiat, it would be made illegal. That is 100% true. Um, this guy would be in jail if cryptocurrency was like a legitimate threat to fiat currency. But the other reason why it's not is because it just like moves fucking money around. Okay. You can kind of get away with moving money around a little bit, especially if you're the federal government and a bunch of fucking dumbasses get to scam a bunch of other fucking dumbasses.
more Hassan lore. Hassan knew that delayed autistic Gubby lived in Vegas and door knocked for Bernie Sanders, but remembering this about one of his online friends had an unexpected consequence. He no longer remembers his first kiss. This is the cost of being a Twitch streamer. As Hassan has come to realize, the memories of his past are slowly slipping away as he spends more and more time in the digital world. Why did you write that, dude? That's kind of sad. This is why I regularly change my username. I don't want you remembering me. Motherfucker, I will look through your account and figure out what the fuck your dumbass username was originally. Do you understand? I'm not going to do that right now. But wait, hold on. Let me see. This dude's only gotten 74 timeouts, dude. No, you can't. There goes another core memory. Yeah, what am I doing? I'm losing core memories. Okay, wait. Well, you don't like this word, the C word. Can't say. Oh, shit. He's got a different C word than the one I got. That's crazy. Advice? I just, okay. I, I, Jesus, I, I, my There's mother taught me better to say don't, that don't word. Don't so. censor yourself. All right. This well, is America. We're, not we talking free about, we're talking about the other C word. Oh, that uh, word. Oh, I would never say that just word. As bad. That's an awful word. Never say that. <laughs> Take that crypto word out of your mouth. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. She actually said it. So don't force me to come up on stage and slap you. Is there too much buzz around the C word space in general? Well, or? nothing in the C word space has succeeded, right? I mean, I've been looking at this now for almost 12 years, and I've seen hundreds and thousands come and go, and uh, the non none, none succeed, and none will succeed. When I listen to some of this stuff about the tax benefits, to me, I go, well, it could be just another way for the rich people to hide their money. In other I mean, do you, do you look at it like that at all? Do you see that critique? No, I would say it's not about rich people hiding their wealth. It's about poor people hiding their wealth because rich people can always hide their wealth mm -hmm. with or without Bitcoin. That's been true since the beginning of time. But poor people have never had a chance to hide their wealth. There's so uh, many people that say- Yeah, poor people have a chance to hide their wealth by taking $100, putting it into uh, whatever kind of fucking shit coin scam that they got suckered into buying into, and then it becomes $0 when the rug pull comes, and that's how you hide your wealth. It's great. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're hiding your wealth when you just lose it all. You know, that's, that's awesome. That's how you hide it. It's one quick trick. You give me the money and then it goes away. Say that this is all one big scam. Bitcoin is not the bubble. Bitcoin is the pin and it's pricking the bubble, which is fiat money. <laughs> that's what Bitcoin does. It reveals the, the, the scam. It reveals the US dollar is a scam. It reveals the gold market is a scam. The end of the fiat dark ages is here. The beginning of Renaissance 2.0 in good times. I'm is willing here. to bet if you go far enough, uh, if you go back far enough in time, this motherfucker was a Ron Paul gold standard Andy, okay? Yeah, go back to like 1999, okay? And he was 100%, 2005, he was like, we got to get back to the gold standard. We got to get back to the gold standard. And now he's like, this is his thing. This is the new shtick. Like, you. It's still early. If you could trade some fiat, if you could buy Bitcoin with dollars, it's early. Okay. What's I mean? What's the fiat? Can I not? Am I not gonna be able to buy it with fiat? Am, Who's gonna want to take your fucking dollars? This is garbage. This is the most Bitcoin thing you could do at a Bitcoin conference. It's terrible. It's terrible. This, is, this is the instrument of financial terrorism. We're eradicating the plague of the U.S. dollar and all fiat money. Will you join us, my son? Will you forsake fiat money? Uh, I've got to have the laser eyes coins into your life as the ultimate savior. I feel, I praise the algorithm. Done! Saved! Saved again! Another soul has been saved! Max and Stacy hadn't quite converted me, but I did start to understand the cultural beliefs behind Bitcoin. He is true. The USD is a tool of financial terror, to be honest. One million percent correct. That is the most correct take you can have. But also... There is no, like, alternative that he is suggesting that makes sense. Remember, scammers, con men, you know, people like Alex Jones, they regularly use correct takes to sucker people like you into whatever the fuck they're selling. You have to give people a truth. You have to tell them something that is true so they believe you and they trust you only to then follow through on that with like a whole bunch of fucking lies that you're, you know, able to hide under that grain of truth.
In addition to listening to hours and hours of people talking about money, I realized I was missing out on another important aspect of crypto. What is fiat money? Fiat currency is just currency that you use, like the dollar, backed by a state. Culture, the parties. So I made some calls to some locals to see where we could get a camera crew in to party. Bitcoin is the alternative because it's decentralized, not controlled by the government, bro. Yeah, totally. It's definitely not controlled by the government. <laughs> For which one? For both of them? It sounds unlikely for for party. Okay, we'll be on standby. I already group chatted him with one of the guys at. What is a dollar backed by really? Uh, here, what is a dollar backed by really? That's a good question. How many does the U.S. have? Um. Um, at its peak, I guess, but uh, currently 3,750 uh, nuclear uh, weapons, nuclear arms in its uh, current stockpile. Yeah. Back by freedom, baby. Okay. You guys are good to go to there. And we're good to bring one camera in with us, or? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. All right, sick. Okay, cool. After hours of back and forth and waiting, a friend of mine in... Can you elaborate on the USD being a tool for terror? The American currency, or just the currencies that we use, fiat currency backed by states, are actually backed not just by the state, but by state violence, okay? The entire global economy hinges on the endless expansionist uh, uh, protocol set in place by those who are keeping the currency alive. Uh, the petrodollar, or America's endless endeavors all around the globe as they, as they continue to extract surplus labor value and exploit the third world, and also extract natural resources from the third world as well. The entire global economy relies on this. And the IMF is a global debt enforcer, yes. Involved with the NFT scene, Tommy Ohanti was able to get us in touch with someone, still not sure who, to get us into a party. So you're connected with the scene from your NFTs, kind of? Yes. Okay. Yes. So like, everybody, you know, reaches out and they're like, Tommy, like, you know, you gotta come, you gotta check out what we're doing, our projects. That, do you, that, do you know the owner? Know. Who um, is this guy? Apparently I do, but I honestly don't even remember his name. Okay, <laughs> so, all right, very we'll cool. See. Let's go to the right side. Okay. okay. There's a lot of people here. Yeah, this is kind of what I wanted to show you guys. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know? it's definitely something. So everybody's in the front yard here, but they're not necessarily getting in? Is it, What's going on? I would imagine that's the case. Okay, yeah. all right. So you drink, are you gonna drink? Or? Oh, I'm gonna drink, yeah, we got, we got a drink. Uh, I guess we gotta get off the grass. Okay, we're, we're still online, so. We're waiting for the owner to come get us. So. It's kind of crowded, so it's kind of difficult. Oh no, he's got no fucking pull, dude. Oh no. He ain't got no pull, bro. He's waiting. Oh no, imagine not being able to get into the fucking cryptocurrency house. Oh no, he's got no clout, dog. I know, I know, I know. No, nobody's tripping. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be great. Yeah, I mean, everyone. Just let, let, let's bring the party. Let's, 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 get let's, get let's get through. Let's get through. Let's get through. Let's get through. Yeah, dude. No, no one's getting in. What's up? Team squad. Team squad. Show me your media passes. Thank you. I like that. Not a Wait, he got in only because he has a media pass, not because he the owner knew him. That's crazy. Imagine needing the fucking vice guy to get you into the fucking crypto party. That's crazy, bro. That is what happened, dude. Did all your all your tokens are gone? All your clout is gone. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Holy shit! Oh my god! <laughs> I feel rebirth. It's like taking a date to a five-star restaurant where you know it's closed and plan B is the cheap place nearby. Uh, I guess get a drink. Oh my god, there's so many people here. Where are the drinks at? What do you guys want? You guys want a drink? Getting, getting a free drink. We're getting a kick out of there. That doesn't even look fun. It's not. I've been to cryptocurrency parties, unfortunately. Okay? And they are not fun, bro. They are the nerdiest, sweatiest fucking... Dog, I'm a Twitch streamer, okay? I've gone to Twitch streamer parties. Let me tell you, cryptocurrency parties are unironically on a different fucking level of, like, sweaty nerdy. It's crazy, dude. You guys in the white shirts are, uh, say that. 
no cameras are allowed in it. Can we finish these beers? All right, so uh, we just got got into a sick party, and then uh, we got kicked out of a sick party. <laughs> All right, welcome to Bitcoin Week. As my time came to a close in Miami, things never looked so bright for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. But just like my abrupt exit from the party, cryptocurrencies also experienced a rude awakening. Bro, he got kicked out of the Bitcoin party? Oh no, bro. Vice has no pull nowadays. That's crazy. Bitcoin is in free fall. It's almost 70% off its historic high it hit in November. As some experts warn that a crypto winter is coming. Several crypto firms reportedly cautioning that thousands of digital currencies and blockchains mm. are likely to collapse in the coming years. The price of digital currencies fell and we descended into a crypto winter. To warm myself up and see what the fallout was, I returned hobbling to Miami after I broke my foot getting up to pee in the middle of the night. Something almost as embarrassing as my decision to buy some Bitcoin right after the conference. The most in shape vice journalist, dude. <laughs> the most... The most athletic vice journalist. <laughs> my man broke his foot getting up the pee at night. Why would you admit that, my man? Jesus Christ. I had yet to see how someone used cryptocurrencies in a practical manner. So I came to meet up with one of Tommy's friends, Sal, who wanted to show us how he used digital money in the real world. What are we doing here? We're just about to hop on some skis right now. Okay. Um, just some typical Miami day. You know? Typical Miami day. And yes, you, you paid for this experience with your crypto. Yeah, of course. I mean, just like any other experience here in Miami, um, you can pay in crypto. It's a very crypto friendly city. Oh yeah, we've, we've heard. Uh, yes, we've sir. Heard. Well, I'd go, I would I'd go with you, but I'm a little worried about my, about my foot, so. I thought you were going with me. I, I was supposed to go with you and then I, and I fucked up my foot, man. <laughs> You have to get on with me. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. Sometimes you just can't say no. I love that. This guy's living his best life, dude. I gotta be very interested in showing us how he could use cryptocurrencies for so-called practical purchases. So we ended up at Timepiece Trading a place I'd visited before while shooting my documentary about the rich. This watch with a rainbow bezel from the factory, $750,000. Really? How are we feeling? Good, man. This feels like deja vu. We're going back to timepiece trading. Yeah, of course. This is a spot. How are you? Hey, man. Good to see you again. I think yeah. I, let, I met you yeah, last time. Man. Yes, yes. How are you guys doing, bro? Good? Good, man. Very young pet gems. Very young pet gems. I gotta be secure. That's right, that's right. Let's get you on the right camera. How long? Okay. So what's up, Zeke? What do you think? I don't, man, I was in here before I got the whole spiel last time. I don't know anything about watches. You know, I upgraded since last time I saw you got an Apple watch, but like, I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at when I look at this. Like, at, least, at least you have something on now. I would say I have a time piece. <laughs> so we sort of respect piece. to us. It's just like what face do you like and like the popularity of it, of course. And how much does this cost? This right now is 195. Okay. And you guys are accepting cryptocurrencies now. Yeah, right? we are. We we have to move with the world, right? Do you, is everybody you know in the luxury goods space taking crypto at this point? I think so. I think so. Now most people have adapted. And honestly, crypto has done huge for us. Like it's done like very good. So I think our business has maybe tripled because of crypto. Wow. Yeah. Your business is tripled because yeah. of crypto. Because why? Because people are people are making more money off crypto. They want to spend crypto, and they feel more comfortable spending crypto. Exactly, and and also it's a good way for people to unload crypto into into actual assets. Mm. You know, so we take USDC, USDT, Bitcoin, Ethereum, just the four like top coins. The four main ones. Yeah, for 185, and I'm telling you, you won't you won't find that price anywhere else. All right, you said 180 or 185. 185. But he, didn't he just say 180? You I know, roll back the tape, I don't know. <laughs> roll back the tape, he just said 180s. We'll meet in the middle, 180.35. Like, All right, that's I'm, I'm already stretching, okay, I'm already okay, stretching, okay, okay. like for real. Okay, okay, okay. 180.25 is actually in the middle, boss. Wow. What? <laughs> Touche. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I can't, everybody's gonna watch that video. Okay, fine, like, 180.25, done. All right. Do it. Sal ended up paying for his watch with a stable coin, a digital money pegged to a fiat currency. My requests to photograph the transaction on the computer screen were denied. Supposedly, it was just a bunch of information and numbers on a page. It hit. 
Yeah, I got it. All right, cool. So we got 192,600 because of the sales tax. Thank you, my brother. Of course, bro. Well, congratulations. Is this what you wanted? Yeah. Are you happy? Yes. They say money can't buy happiness. Whoever said that didn't have enough money. Watches are a well-known status symbol. For crypto enthusiasts, however, there's a new digital status symbol that has taken hold, NFTs. Non-fungible tokens, known as NFTs, have a lot of potential in the real world. They're essentially a stamp of ownership stored on the blockchain. Think of it like a digital certificate of authenticity. NFT art projects such as the Blue Chip Board Ape Yacht Club and CryptoPunks have brought NFTs into the wider vernacular, while running up the valuation of the NFT marketplace, OpenSea, to over $13 billion. The NFT scene quickly exploded and then imploded, but not before Sal was able to make a quick buck by getting hooked up with early access to NFT projects, known as a whitelist, because he was part of exclusive chat groups. Being a part of all these groups gave you first access kind of to NFTs, you know? I was able to capitalize on a lot of opportunities because I was able to get whitelisted. If the people in the groups are talking about it, that means it's something. Let's say I'm Joe Schmo, retail NFT collector, I'm not in any of these groups. I just read so much about NFTs. Retail so NFT collector on, instead you know, of the institutional like NFT collector. And I'm just like, oh, I can afford this can... one. I'm going to buy this one. Good or bad idea. But yeah. you don't know anything? I don't know That's anything. a terrible idea. Okay. I mean, I just feel like there's so much hype that's around like, NFTs. That's like, okay, but that's like hype around shoes. And sure. You just go buy any shoe. If you have the right marketing behind it, you can sell out. Mm -hmm. You basically pay influencers or you pay celebrities to make a post. And a lot of people, because they're naive and they saw a lot of people make money on NFTs and people by nature are greedy, right? They believe their favorite artist when he comes out and says, oh, I own in this project, buy it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what kind of happened in the space. And that's how a lot of these scams happen in this space too. With all the hype around these projects, it's no wonder that scams abound in what's known in the NFT community as a rug pull, where projects that propose long-term roadmaps suddenly close up shop and the owners take off with the money. Have you ever been bamboozled yourself? Oh, oh yeah, hundred percent. Oh yeah. So this is your little squiggle here. Yeah. Okay. That is so stupid. It is. <laughs> it is so stupid. And uh, I bought it for like an Ethereum, I think. So you bought it for an Ethereum. Sal bought into an NFT project known as Squiggles. Hours before the project was set to mint, a document was released online that loosely connected a number of individuals tied to suspected rug pulls with the founder of Squiggles, a 22-year-old named Arsalan. I have no bad intentions. I would never hurt anyone physically, financially, or mentally. It's not in me. The NFT scene went into the lockdown and accused the not-yet-released Squiggles project of being a rug pull, which resulted in it being delisted from the main NFT marketplace, OpenSea. Internet sleuth CoffeeZilla called Arsalan a scammer on Twitter and released an 11-minute video detailing the drama. Behind the face of this kid in braces sits a group of NFT scammers in the shadows. And what's worse is that they've done this before. Except this time, the stakes are higher than ever. They stand to make $20 million on this scam. The creator of the project, Arsalan, had remained silent until now. This document had... That's crazy, bro. Every fucking time, bro. Every time, bro. That's crazy. Little to do with me. Like, probably 2% speaking about me. And the rest had to do with these, like, four other guys that had no affiliation with the project. But I w these were people that I was hanging out with when I was living in Los Angeles. Those are cool kids that I was hanging out with. I liked them. I didn't know about their past like that. I never really asked them. I guess some people were, you know, gathering evidence on them. It was like a coordinated attack. They dropped it three hours before our launch. And... Dude, Twitter was like a storm. Just everyone talking about it and how, oh, don't mid squiggles, it's a scam. We still did it, obviously, and made like 7.3 million in under 10 minutes. Did you talk to those guys afterwards? Yeah, I still talk to them. You and still talk to I them? I have no problems with them. I think they're good kids. There's all allegations towards them. I, I don't know if they're true or not, but if it were to ever come out that those allegations were true, then I wouldn't work with them. Did anybody lose money on it? I mean, if you minted it? If they sold it at that, at that moment, they would have made profit. If not, and they held it, then they lost money. But, you know, it's the name of the game. It's what happens. Since all that happened, February 10th, to this day, I still get death threats. And people say, hey, you owe me this and that. So far, I'd seen a lot of things in crypto that turned me off. Overzealous believers. Under I don't understand. Did you just describe doing a rug pull with a bunch of dudes who are famously uh, doing rug pulls? And then turn around and say, but it's like, you know, that's just life. Like, is that what he just said? Like, he just, dude. And then motherfuckers are like, uh -huh, actually, um, actually, dude, uh, fiat 
is better. Uh, fiat is worse for this kind of scam. It's like, you can't do a fucking Ponzi scheme like to this degree and steal $20 million from people without government scrutiny, okay? I'm just letting you know. Like, that's not a thing. At least, like, there is some level of control around that. You can't just steal $20 million or $7 million from, like, a bunch of people and then get away with it. It's not that easy. I do find it funny that, like, no, you can do it in crypto. You can't do it in, like, with just regular money, okay? But I do find it funny that, like, it almost feels like they don't understand that, like, scamming people is a bad thing. Underwhelming digital art and lots of scamming. All things that could come with fast money. I had one more stop to make that I hoped would clarify how the future of cryptocurrencies can actually be beneficial to the masses. Thank you so much for coming out to the Bronx. This is the home of hip hop. Home of graffiti. The home of the Yankees. The home of Big Pun. And now, the, the home, home of, of cryptocurrency. cryptocurrency. I love it. You guys practice that? You know, we just, I just made it up this yeah. morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So the reason we started Bronx Crypto is because we know that there is a big financial shift that is happening. Yeah, we're here to educate the people because we don't want to be left behind. And we also want to make the space more inclusive, more people of color. And we believe if you start allocating slowly into cryptocurrency, you will be included in the new financial system. So why do you think that cryptocurrencies allow you to be more inclusive. There is no middleman. We can finally trade or barter without someone deciding on what the charge is or, or what the interest rate is gonna be. The big banks have long been the gatekeepers of the money that can be invested in anything from college tuition to small business loans. But in a familiar tale, these banks have also engaged in a sordid history of both prejudice lending and predatory loan practices targeting people of color. We're at the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, let me take a second and look back at this. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Take a, take a what do you, go, to what do you guys look at this? What do you guys think? The banks are just here to nickel and dime us. You put your money in the bank, you get no interest. How come they get to make money with our money, but we can't make money with our money? We're challenging the financial system. With cryptocurrency, you could be your own bank. You know, you could borrow, you could hedge against your own crypto. You can borrow against your own NFTs. You could be independent. And this is for everyone who has been taken advantage by the big guy. That was awesome. That's awesome. How'd that feel? That feel good? Feels yeah, great. it did. It, did. <laughs> it was a middle finger from the whole world. Watching Julio and Drew give the finger to Wall Street made me think about the punk rock fuck you days of the internet, long before it was corporatized in a Super Bowl commercial blitz. Even when the facade of the early dot-com era... That is an insane thing to gather from that. No, the early days of the internet was awesome because it was fucking free, okay? Every, the profit motive had not set in yet, okay? This is pure profit motive. There is no other incentive to be a part of, like, there is no other incentive to be a part of any sort of fucking scheme in the crypto space other than money. And they're very open about it, too. Like, it's not like they hide it. It took, like, some of the worst parts of the internet and just... Put it under high gear. A crumbled, the spirit of the internet and its ability to transform our world has never ceased. The crypto sector made a lot of early adopters a lot of money very quickly. It's logical that carpetbaggers would come along and try to hype the masses into any number of get rich quick scams. While I don't see myself pouring all my savings into Bitcoin at the moment, I do realize that despite all the early hype, the internet eventually fulfilled a lot of the functions we were promised in its infancy. Only time will tell if the crypto sector will do the same. Ethereum? Never heard of her. <laughs> Blockchain. <laughs> why did they get the why did they get the fucking worst guy? Hey, it's Zika. Like this guy's like straight up a fan, dude. He he's just like I feel like he could have been infinitely more critical of cryptocurrency than he they was say money actually, you know what I mean?